Modern Israel's birth began with UN resolutions. Formally declare Israel admitted to membership in the United Nations. Bravery on the battlefield and 2,000 years of hope and prayers. And the ties that bind us, that connect Israel with Rochester, were there from the beginning, even before Israel was an independent nation. As a young student in Israel, Dove Weidenfeld planned to leave the Pardes Hana school and join the elite fighting force, Palmach. My husband, Dove Weidenfeld, wrote this beautiful letter from Pardes Hana on May 16, 1948. This was when he was in high school. He was 17 years old, and his class was planning to run away from Pardes Hana. By the time you receive this letter, I will probably be in boot camp. I am joining the Palmach, not hastily or lightheadedly. I have contemplated this deeply. I wish that my parents will understand me. I wish to congratulate them for the founding of the Jewish state for which we waited 2,000 years. My father uh, arrived in Israel in, uh, when he was six years old. He lived in seeing the state of Israel being born. He fought in the War of Independence in 1948. My father says that, you know, the most difficult day in the state of Israel was when his brother died. He came home to sit shiva for his brother, and my grandmother was holding on to his leg, begging him not to go back to the front line of uh, the war. Coming from a family where one was a Holocaust survivor and one was uh, raised in the state of Israel, being Jewish was the most important kind of foundation in our family. And as a result of that, I've watched the evolution of the state of Israel. The country's grown into a modern powerhouse of both intellect, a military force. When you see a tragedy around the world, you see the Mogan David star of people rescuing and offering to help. So, you know, to me, that's what makes me feel connected to the state of Israel. And I think that's what's made Rochesterians be connected to the state of Israel. After the 1948 war, Louis Norrie's grandfather, Irving, helped smuggle munitions to Israel. My grandfather was in the electrical equipment business, which involved big metal boxes and equipment after the war that the nascent Israeli government and defense industry wanted. Uh, he was approached to get involved in uh, the acquisition of military resources for the state of Israel and the smuggling of them in the late 1940s. As Israel developed, Rochester's ties to the country grew even stronger. In 1972, Mayor Stephen May declared Rehovot Israel Rochester's fourth sister city. These sister cities programs, even though they're very diverse, they're different from each other, they have one goal in common, and that is to promote friendships between cities, hopefully between nations, and to engage people. In 1998, Rochester's Jewish Federation organized an interfaith trip to Israel for Rochester's religious leaders. Together, they explored the connections between their individual beliefs and traditions. For us as a community to be able to say that difference isn't a divider. Difference can actually be what brings us together and enriches us. There is something about Israel that when you're walking, the very dust speaks to you of history. In 2018, the Ferris Foundation chose Amos Oz as its first Ferris Fellow. The prolific and prominent Israeli author spent six weeks in Rochester writing and lecturing to enthusiastic audiences. I think Amos Oz's visit had a profound impact and it's still having a profound impact I think the, the audience, no matter what their level of knowledge about Israel and Israeli culture and Israeli literature, I think they walked out with a greater understanding of the complexities of that part of the world. For many years, Rochesterians have joined Volunteers for Israel, spending time living and working on military bases. It's unskilled work but fun people to work with and feeling that we're doing something worthwhile. 
Nearly every year, Rami Katz takes students to Israel as part of his course in entrepreneurship at the University of Rochester's Simon School of Business. When you're studying entrepreneurship, it's very easy to see that this relatively small petri dish, Israel, which is the size of about 9 million people, the size of New Jersey, has much more entrepreneurial activity than anywhere else in the world. So when they developed the class, the focus was to teach entrepreneurship, cultural differences, and how do different entrepreneurs approach entrepreneurship around the world. So that's what the class tries to, to do. We combine actual projects with Israeli startups, and you learn how to define a project, how to work with Israeli entrepreneurs, what's their speed, what's your speed, what's your style of communication, what they're looking for. And that is really the premise of the class, to teach different ways of thinking about entrepreneurship. One of the things that we're most proud at the Federation is the strength of the relationship between our Jewish community, between the Federation and Israel. And it continues to grow through the programming that we do around what a modern state of Israel looks like. Over 20 years ago, the Federation established a partnership with the city of Modi'in. When we visited Modi'in, we entered the city, very contemporary city, and we knew that this wasn't the Israel of 1948 any longer, that this was a place where young people, teens, and others were living similar lives in different places. The partnership with Modi'in includes many unique projects and programs, all focusing on people-to-people -people exchanges. The Ramin program is a partnership between young professionals in Rochester, New York, and young professionals in Modi'in, Israel. The goal was to go and shadow whomever your partner was, to get to go to work with them. I always say I was the luckiest because I got Moshe as my partner for Ramim. I would say this adventure was kind of a life-changing adventure because from that point, I really got engaged uh, in the importance of uh, Israel and the diaspora connection. We are one community. We are living in Israel and they are living in the States, but uh, the things that are binding us together are much more stronger uh, than I really believed before. The Education Bridge exchanges students and teachers between Modi'in and Rochester, affecting lives far beyond just those who travel. The non-Jewish people in our community having a better understanding of the importance of Israel by setting foot there and recognizing the beauty and the importance and the essential nature of Israel, I think we just all develop a better understanding of our friends and neighbors when we do that. That trip, it kind of just reminded me of like the goodness of humanity and how people are very caring and I very appreciate it a lot. Yeah, and very welcoming. So yeah, I think I'll always, Israel will always hold a very special place in my heart. Israel is a developed country, but the stories are still developing. You know, things are changing every day and we see it in the news. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to go back and see how things have changed. For any student who wants to go on this trip, or any student in general, I would say definitely go on this trip. The yeah. relationships that you build and also the, um, the memories that you will keep mm -hmm. on with you, you know, that, that's the main, uh, main thing from the trip. Each summer, teens from Rochester and Modi'in travel between the United States, Poland, and Israel on a journey for identity. Understanding what is to be a young Jew in the diaspora is something that for Israelis is not noticeable on a daily basis. And same for uh, somebody who lives in, in the U.S. and, and have his uh, uh, daily, daily life. When he comes here, he understands what is not to be a minority. The something that was really, really surprising for me is how I felt during the Israel time in this trip. But something at the JFI, I felt like I'm seeing Israel for the first time. Seeing Israel from different pair of eyes, um, like the fact that it was Zoe's first time and a lot of other kids was like first time too. I always felt attached to Israel, but going there and like, especially after Poland, I was like, wow, like, I'm so proud of us. We made it through and we have our own country and we deserve that. And that's so special to me. 
Together we are uh, celebrating 20 years of cooperation, of friendship, of a warm and sincere bond between our two cities. There have been and continue to be so many other ties. Parades down East Avenue for Israel's 25th and 50th anniversaries. The international soccer game between Israel and the Rochester Rhinos. The Maccabi Games in 1999, when 1,400 kids from Rochester and Israel competed in sports at the JCC. The Rochester Jewish Film Festival, introducing audiences to Israeli films for nearly 25 years. Endless Israeli programs by Rochester synagogues and our Shin Shinim. Shalom, everyone. We're Rochelle again, Shai, the new Shin Shinim. We came here all the way from Israel. <laughs> The Shin Shinim are Israeli high school graduates who defer their military service, spending a year in Rochester as guests of the Jewish Federation and volunteering throughout the city. This flag says it all. This is the homeland of the Jewish people since thousands of years ago. We've lived an incredibly wonderful, rich Jewish life in the United States because we have a strong Israel. It's the common thread that runs through the Jewish people, whether you're living in Rochester, in Ethiopia, in Ukraine, you know, around the world. Because we have Israel in common, it binds us together as a people. The ties that bind us, they've been here for 75 years. Today, they're everywhere. Tomorrow, they'll grow even stronger because our future connects with Israel's and Israel's future connects with us. This is our haktikva, our hope. These are the ties that bind. <laughs>